the announcement was today. How long did it take to put this together for Javante uh, and Badu? It, it, it took a lot longer than expected. That's why you guys just not getting it. And these are the things that, you know, happen, you know, as part of the, you know, the promotion business, you know. Sometimes you target a guy, and for whatever reason, it doesn't work out, you know, guy falls out, you gotta go find another guy, you know, and um, they take time. And, and I, again, I apologize that it's taken this long to be able to get you guys the undercard, but, you know, it wasn't, this wasn't done by design, and, you know, now you have it, and we have a, a great undercard along with a spectacular main event. In Badu's case, because uh, it seems like there might have been some other names tossed around, you landed on Cleverly, of course. But who else did you guys negotiate with to try to get for this card? For, for who? For Badu. Well, I don't want to get into, you know, names, because, you know, they're, 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 um, but, you know, we got, we got what we wanted. He's, uh, he's going to be a two-time world champion, and uh, the sky's the limit for this young man, and we're looking to uh, go in there and take care of business with Nathan Cleverly um, on the 26th and go from there. Well, there was a, you know, it seemed like there was a few names that kept surfacing. Yeah. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? And yeah, it, again, it, touching on the same thing. You know, these kind, of, these kind of things happen. There were two guys that it didn't work out. And, um, you know, we're here, right here now. Uh, he's defending this title. And um, I made the best fight that I possibly could. And um, he's going to put on a, a, a dynamic performance for uh, you guys and the fans uh, come that night. Leonard, a lot's being made of ticket sales so far for the event that it's not a sellout when people thought it would be. What's your take on where ticket sales stand right now and, and why this event isn't sold out? Okay, for first off, first off, let me, let, me, let me get, I'm actually tired of hearing that question because right now we have over $60 million in the box office. And you tell me what part of that that remotely look like ticket sales are slow. This isn't the damn Rolling Stones concert. That's the only thing that sells out in seconds. And we're talking about, you know, when we're talking about tickets, go from five hundred to ten thousand dollars you know that's an expensive ticket you know so you have every CEO from every major company you know guys it takes time for them to plan and get it together the fact of the matter is that we have 60 million over 60 million dollars in the box office right now which is more than double any other live gate that's ever been done the fight that they have on the 16th of September next month our fight right now We've got more in the box office right now, double, than what they will have. And again, we're not talking, you know, a two or three million dollar gate. You know, all these record-breaking events uh, and the numbers that are associated with it, um, all are because of Floyd Mayweather, a little guy who's soaking wet 147 pounds. You know what I'm saying? It's broke all these records. That's what's wrong with boxing today. You guys always complaining and looking for shit to complain about when there's nothing there. That's the reason why we can't, we can't be innovative. You know, that's, that's what Floyd Mayweather has done differently from anybody else. You know what I'm saying? He's thought outside the box. Someone said to me, oh, something about tickets on sale at Costco. I'm like, we don't have nothing to do with that. But when you think about it, is that a bad thing? <laughs> opening, opening this thing up it was a to, funny thing. It, opening this thing up to a housewife in Desmond, I, Idaho, Iowa, Kansas, Somebody who would normally be able to have access to our fight. Is that a bad thing for it to be accessible in Costco? That's what's wrong with boxing right now. Everyone wants to operate in this little small circle. And that's why this, this little guy over here at 147 pounds will go over making a billion dollars in this fight because he's been able to think outside of the box. Everybody's operating in this little thing. You know, times change. You gotta think outside the box. Having tickets, and again, Ticketmaster chose to do that. And oh, by the way, the largest place where you can go buy anything in the whole entire world. When I talked to you last week, you had made the comment, you said you were going to get the numbers that it would compare favorably to the Super Bowl or any event that's ever been held. Have you gotten those numbers? Sure, sure. Right now, again, yeah, we're well over $60 million. And the, the highest grossing... Uh, Live gate record is $103 million. For what? For, what? for, for a live, live sporting event. Wait, what, what was it? Please? Super Bowl. The most recent one? No, it was the Giants. The, 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 the Giants Super Bowl the Giants played in. Giants and Patriots? Yeah, 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 yeah. $103 million. And, and, and again, 
we're going to blow past our own record of $72 million. What are we talking about? Do, do you know the gross, what like what what the gross of the biggest Super Bowl would be? So I know you're talking six, seven hundred million dollars gross on this event. How would that compare to whatever other big event has been held? A, a single night event, not like in the Olympics or anything, but a single night event. Yeah, um, we're still putting those numbers together, and we're going to see how this how the pay per view does. You know, we don't want to predict anything, but again, we, we this fight right here is massive. There's no other way to look at it. We've been able to um, generate interest that wouldn't normally be out there from just a casual fan. Just a casual fan, you know, um, because the two worlds have collided. And again, you know, both guys have, have uh, very, very unique personalities that, you know, casual fans have, you know, developed an interest in. You know, Floyd has been, you know, out there, um, for a number of years, and you know, Connor has come on, and the UFC has done a phenomenal job with being able to market him and, and their brand. You know, so both worlds coming together, and with Floyd being the biggest earner in sports and history, you know, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we have a massive, massive event. We're going to break all kinds of records. Right now, we've already, in some of the categories, we've right now already surpassed uh, May Pat, you know, especially from the international side. I fully expect us to break all the international records, you know, um, and what I'm encouraging is that the fans go out and buy the fight right now. We have the fight accessible on a number of platforms right now, um, and that's what we're encouraging. Buy now, wait, why wait for later? When you look at this fight compared to Mayweather Pacquiao, on Mayweather Pacquiao you had five plus years of people saying this is going to be a great fight, this is going to be a great fight. This one did not have that long build up. So why do you think this one has taken off so significantly when you know most of the media is the fight is going to be a blowout and, and Floyd would win big and yet this fight is still taking off and on pace to, as you said to surpass Pacquiao? Well because again I, I think the 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 general interest from just the casual fans who are very excited about this event coming together. That's what makes this massive, you know, just not only in the U.S., but just the international uh, exposure alone. It's, it, this thing is taking off, and it's, it's just going at a rate that right now I wouldn't be surprised what happens, you know, uh, because, again, you know, you have the two guys that are coming together, and the fight itself you know, both guys are looking to knock each other out. I, I, I believe Conor McGregor when he says that he's, he's looking to come knock Floyd out in the first four rounds. I believe him. I, I mean, he hadn't shown me anything to think anything differently. In Floyd's case, it's a little different because Floyd don't normally predict fights. And, and he, you know, he just goes and kind of does his thing. I think that there have been, especially... A lot of things that have happened recently, I think Floyd really wants to get this guy out of here. I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. I think that you're going to see more aggressive Floyd Mayweather in this fight. Connor said that he's going to come forward. I know what Floyd's going to do. And that's another reason why that, you know, I petitioned the, the commission for the eight-ounce gloves. You know, uh, fighting it potentially, potentially, if the commission uh, uh, approves it, Fighting in small, smaller gloves, it increases the probability of somebody getting knocked out. So you talk about the appeal to the casual fan. What about the hardcore fans of each sport, the ones that have been a little bit outspoken and say, oh, this is a, this is a circus, this is not a real fight. How do you address those fans? Well, again, we appreciate all the fans. We don't never, ever want to turn our back on anyone or say anything about the, you know, but again, the, the hardcore fans, that's the reason why that our sport isn't where football and basketball is because we stay in our own little box. And, you know, it's like, you tell me what's wrong with these two guys fighting. If you don't want to watch it, don't buy it. As simple as that. But you can't be mad and going out there like some media members and promoting, oh, this is why you shouldn't buy the fight and this and that. Mind your fucking business. You know? It's like, do your job, cover the sport, and, and obviously you have to give your opinion which we understand that, but it's like we don't see you saying nothing else about anybody else's events and this and that. We know what it's about. We know what this is about. 
you know? And it's like, okay, but one thing's for sure, you're not gonna stop this event. The fans demanded this event, and this is what they're gonna get. We didn't ask for this. We didn't ask for this. You think you Social would? media was on fire because these two guys going at it. Did, you, did, did, did we happen to miss the, the world tour? Did we see the, 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 the record uh, number, uh, um, amount of fans that came out to support a world tour? You kidding me? Do you, foresee, do you foresee them at all going no on the eight ounce? You both want it, and why do you think in their minds? Let's say they said no, we're going to stay. What would be a reason that would really make you upset if they gave it back to you if they don't go to if they don't approve it? Well, one, we're not going to get upset at anything. I, I, I personally, and, and Floyd included, we have a great deal of respect for the best commission in all of all of the sport, and that's the Nevada Athletic State Commission. Um, I, I, I'm very confident they they will make a decision best on the based on the best interests of the fans, the commission, the fighters. You know, both fighters have agreed that this is what they want. And some, again, this is something that's uh, unprecedented. So they have to, uh, they have to rule on that. And um, we're gonna present our case uh, on the 16th um, and we'll go from there. We, we are hoping that they approve it. Again, I, I think that if the Eight ounce gloves are uh, approved. I think it increases the probability of someone getting knocked out. That's my take on it. Whose Floyd. idea was it originally to go to the eight ounce? Floyd, Floyd, Floyd put it out there. I didn't think of this. <laughs> he he put it out there on social media. He didn't say nothing to me about it. I I had to read it. I was like, oh okay. <laughs> what do you think his logic is? I mean, that would seem to favor Connor, the knockout artist, versus. The defensive fight. Yeah, you guys don't know nothing about Floyd. Y'all got this. The, yeah, all these, all these descriptions I see of him running around the ring, scared. Y'all need to come down here and watch him box. Y'all need to come down here because that's not the same guy. It, it's like I think the fights kind of dictate the way things go. The opponents, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like Floyd is a dog. Floyd is a dog when it comes to get, getting in it. He's a. If he needs to go on his bag of tricks. He can do all of that, and some. You know, he unfortunately in a lot of cases over the years, you know, he has naturally small hands, so that's been a problem. You know, um, and it's and I, I tell you what, if that man wouldn't have had hand problems, I'm telling you, all these guys around here that from from any of these weight classes, 60, all of all that. He stopped all those guys because with his skill set, if he if, if his hands have obviously gotten better over the years, um, that's why he's had to take a lot of time off, and you know he has a hand therapist, and you know, um, but he just has naturally small hands, you know. But um, you know he 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 comes in with a mentality of uh, obviously wanting to uh, give the fans the best performance possible. Sometimes that hadn't hadn't worked out. But again, what he's been able to go out there and do is be, be, in my eyes, the best ever to do it. Dominate his competition, any and everybody that we put in front of him and made very, very good fighters look average. Brother, you know, I'm just struck by your demeanor today, and you and I have worked together for, what, 20 years, right? And I, I don't recall I've ever seen you so fired up as you are now. What, like, why? What, what, what has got you uh, so fired up? Because I, I got a message from somebody, a media person, actually before I came here, and it was asking me something about this Costco thing. And I'm just like, oh, you something about you dumping tickets. And I was like, and I had, I gave them the same spiel. I just, it's like, None of this makes any sense. It's like, we didn't think of this. This had nothing to do with us by Ticketmaster put the tickets there, I'm assuming. But it's, when I thought about it, it's like, is that a bad thing? Is that a bad thing, opening this thing up to, to more people to have accessibility to your event? Is that a bad thing? Again, that's one of the reasons what's wrong with the sport, why we can't continually grow is because of that mentality. That mentality, everyone wants to stay in the same box. We gotta do the, we gotta do the promotions the same way. We gotta do this and that. No, you don't. And Floyd's been able to show you why you don't have to. And that's why he's in the position that he's in, going out there, being his own boss and being his promoter and doing things the way he wants to do them. 
exposing the fans to something different. Leonard, uh, Floyd has become a master self-marketer. We all know that. What has it been like for you to watch him step by step become this massive pay-per-view star that I'm sure a lot of people 15 years ago may not have thought he could do? I, I couldn't, I couldn't, and you, and, we, and I've been knowing you for, for probably almost 20 years. Um, He's, he's just, he's a genius. I, I can't say it enough. It's, it's, it, some of the things that he come up with, it's just, it's mind boggling. And it's like, he has this vision and then, you know, he brings it to us and we're able to, you know, kind of bring things into fruition. But I'm just like, how did you come up with that? You know, because it's like, unlike a lot of these other fighters, they just think that shit just supposed to happen. It's just supposed to fall out the sky. Boyd went out there and created a fan base. He's went out there and created a fan base, love him or hate him, but you, you guys are not around with him when he's flying to all these inner city environments, doing these little small events for, for basically nothing, but it, it's just his thing to reach out to the casual fan, to this guy, that guy, and they remember him from, because he goes, he, he's one of the guys that goes in the hood, you know. Um, he's one of the guys that stands out there and signs the autographs, signs autographs all day, all night at the events, unlike some of the other people, you know, who won't do those kind of things. But he's the kind of star, you know, who has the star power that a casual guy or young lady can come up to him and they can reach out and touch him. You know, and that's why I think he's been able to uh, generate the fan base and his name, his name alone, has made him a household name because people, he's done things, again, that all the other fighters and athletes in any other sport are scared to do. He speaks his mind, but he goes out there and he busts his behind and he puts on great performances. You know, that's how, again, how does a guy, how does a guy at 147 pounds, who you guys say can't punch, can't knock nobody out, how does he become the biggest earner in all the sports? How does that happen? Part of being riled up sounds like uh, they brought that down to gloves. Being defensive, say we ha we have to see him train, see what he does. He's a dog. He's out there. Sounds like you're defending in that he's still in his prime. How do you answer his recent comments in that he's slipping and he's not on top of his game and he's he's getting older and he's aging? Because he is. He's two years older, and unlike a lot of people, because they see, unlike a lot of people, because they see, he's he's a physical specimen. He, he's, his genetics are just incredible. I mean, I say this to him all the time. I can look at some food or this and that, and you know, I can pick up five pounds and I gotta run an extra seven miles, you know, to get it off. With him, he can eat candy, he can eat this and eat anything he wants to and nothing happens, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because he has incredible genetics. But more importantly, he has the best work ethic I've ever seen out of any individual in any sport. And I've been around quite a few people over my, my time. Um, but he's saying those things because he's not selling you guys some BS. He is 40 years old. He has slowed down. He's not the same fighter that he was before. And he hadn't done anything in two years. He's been in this gym for the look at our fighters and encouraged them. But as far as working out, Floyd Mayweather has not worked out, done anything other than travel around on his jet go to all these countries and places and live an incredible life that most of us would never even dream of having. This man is living his dream. And that's all he's been doing for two years, the last two years since he fought Berto. So he's saying those things because it's true. He is older. You know, he has slowed down. He isn't the same fighter that he was, you know, five years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago. All those things are true. We got Leonard, enough to beat yeah. Connor. <laughs> when he wins, he'll be 50 and old, but many fans and some in the media would want to put an asterisk by that, as they did with Roger Maris when he broke Fade Blue's mm -hmm. home record. What will be your reaction when you read things like that? I don't pay those things any attention because, you know, we don't make those decisions and, and we just going out doing our thing. And you guys are caught up in the record, not Floyd. Floyd is not concerned about that. That's not... The, the all the end of all ends for him. You guys make more of this, of the 49 and 0 and the 50 and 0 than he does. He, cause, again, this situation the fans demanded this. He was fine riding around on on his jet 
with all his friends and family, going to all of these exotic places and, you know, going from this mansion to that mansion and living an incredible life. You know, that's what he's used to doing. That's what he was doing. It's, it's an incredible opportunity came about, and we're here. How satisfying is it to have somebody that's going to sell the fight on the other side? Floyd's, the onus has always been on Floyd. Some guys haven't really participated. I mean, even Manny Pacquiao didn't do a lot to sell the fight. So how satisfying is it to see Conor McGregor do what he's doing in the video? It's very satisfying, and, and that's what makes this event so enormous. Because in order to have a great pay-per-view that does astonishing numbers, you have to have somebody on the other side. You know, I've always been able to to carry the load and to go out there and do all the work in the past. And this is a big relief that you see somebody on the other side that, you know, he's talking to talk and, and, and he has a, a legion of fans that believe in him. I mean, because before I had ever even met him, I was impressed myself, you know, and because just... He has, a, he has a innate ability to say and do things that generates incredible amount of interest. You know, I, I, I see why he's the biggest star over there, hands down. I, I mean, I see why, he because he's able to talk the talk. He backs it up, in that case, in the octagon. You know, he does his thing. He's a bad dude. I'm not a hater. I give, I give that man his props. Do you like him? Huh? Do you like Conor McGregor? Do I like Conor McGregor? He's a nice guy. I think that he showed me an incredible amount of respect, and that's what I've given him in return. Uh, he, he, he respects me, and I respect him. Leonard, just when you talk about the incredible pay-per-view number you mentioned, going into the Pacquiao fight, everybody said it was going to be a massive fight, but you were thinking three million maybe, right? And you went to four and a half million. What would be the oh my god number for this fight? So you now everybody's thinking four million. <laughs> what would be, like, if it great hit the home run, how big would that go? That's a great question. It's kind of tough to say because, you know, we have, you know, you don't want to get out in front of it. We just know we got something really special. And, and just based upon my, my daily interaction with all the stuff that I got on my plate, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring the foreign. I'm seeing we've opened this thing up already to a number of, uh, uh, especially digitally, you know, uh, being able to purchase the Fight Now Showtime pay-per-view on their app. You know, open this thing up to the PlayStations and Apple TV and Roku and, you know, all these incredible um, platforms that we, we didn't have access to before just creates a, a bit bigger and better opportunity for more people to have accessibility. That's how it goes back to my thing about the Costco dumb comment. You know, it's just like, that's what you want. You want to be able to have the opportunity and the platform to do your thing. That's why the NBA and, 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 and the NFL has this global reach, and that's what we want to do, to continue to try to do to elevate boxing. And Floyd has single-handedly put boxing on his back. And, and, and the reason why boxing is being talked about as much as it is, is one, again, just imagine the two years that Floyd has been gone. Where was boxing then? You know, with the exception of, of uh, Canelo and, and the little fight that he had, you know, people aren't even really talking about boxing like that. You know what I'm saying? It's that, but the, the minute that you mention Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor, then this thing opens back up, and now you see on all the front pages, you know, uh, again, every A-lister, every, we don't, we don't even have some politicians Well, coming. you know, I mean, just to, I'm not to, you certainly know I'm not hating on this fight. I've been, but to... To say that boxing was dead this year, they had 90,000 at Klitschko. I mean, it's been a good year no, for no, boxing. No, no, no. I said, I said pr prior, prior, prior to, I'm talking, in prior years, while he's been gone. I'm not talking about this year. This has been an incredible year for boxing. And I've been, I've been very vocal about that I'm so proud to be a part of the sport for the, for the great events that we've had, especially since January, our own event, January in, um, in Barclays. That, that, that got the thing rolling in his fight. In his, in his fight against um, DeGale. And then from there, it's been a number of great events, not Mayweather promotions, all the other promoters. Eddie Hearn and them have done an incredible job internationally. You know, uh, Bob has put on some good fights. Golden Boy has put on some good fights. And these are the kind of fights and things that did you want to have in the sport to, again, to increase 
the probability of generating more eyeballs. So what will it require to sustain that? You know, Floyd's 40, he's not going to be around. Klitschko just retired. How do you sustain it into 2018 and beyond? I think one of the things is that um, it's, it kind of starts with a lot of the media, too. And instead of always looking for ways, and nobody's saying you got to be on somebody's you know what. Um, I, I think that instead of always looking for ways to find something to be negative about, look for some of the positive things to try to, to open this thing up to the casual people who, again, like they follow you. You have a tremendous following, so people listen. You know, you have a you have a an audience that most people can they aren't able to reach. And you know, I'm not because we have a different kind of relationship. It's like I'm very honest with you, you're very direct with me. It's like, but again, I think keeping the, 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 the stars, the younger stars in the sport, keeping them more active, I think is gonna be key to it. You know, um, they've done some very good things with trying to put fights on you know, network television, you know, um, instead of looking for ways to dog somebody out because they did five million, five million homes, instead of looking for something positive to come out of that, you know, being able to, okay, this, this is a starting point to be able to elevate it from here. But you guys have find a way to criticize, um, uh, who was it, Thurman and um, uh, Garcia. Garcia for doing five million, for doing uh, five million um, homes? You guys are, are look for for something to criticize them about. You know, you know what I'm saying? To have that kind of platform, it's just it's 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 incredible. Um, and I think Dana's kind of touched on this too. That that's what's this what's wrong with us, and that's why they've been able to kind of grow and and, and do things because it's just like everybody's not looking to shit on everybody's thing. You know, it's just like, it's amazing how those idiotic comments that Bob said the other day, just telling people don't buy their event because this and that. Huh? Have you ever heard me say something like that about any of your, it's like none of this stuff makes any sense. But what it comes down to, it comes down to is that the same guys who hating on the shit is the same guys who wanted to be a part of. He wasn't saying that a few months ago when he openly, publicly said that, oh, well, if Mayweather deal can't come together, uh, I'd love to put Manny Pacquiao in there. He wasn't saying that then. And then when that other idiot, Oscar, said that I'm saying that because that's what I think of him, and I, yes, I did say that. Um, when he says that, the same thing. Oh, the, he would love to promote Conor McGregor, and also he sees no other fight for him other than Canelo. Okay, well, what happened then? It was okay then as long as they could potentially be part of it. But now because they have nothing to do with it, then they want to trash. But guess what? It's okay. It's okay. I wish them nothing but the best. They both are, uh, one of them in particular is a, a, a great promoter, you know, and been around for a long, long time. And, he, you, know, he, they, you know, it is what it is. Leonard, you saw it after Pacquiao, but you saw the next day you know, the lawsuits people were said you know, about his injury, all of that. You just said a little while ago, look, if you don't want to buy this, don't buy it. I'm not encouraging people to. <laughs> right, right. But, but would your, would your hope be, would your hope be if, if this does go out, many believe it might, where he'll beat him easily and he, McGregor might look really bad and, and beat a boxer, that the next day you won't hear, I shouldn't have bought that. It's like it's almost like, look, if you're going to buy it, anything could happen in this thing. Well, I'm very confident that this fight's going to end in, in a knockout. I'm very confident in that. This fight will end in a knockout. I'm very confident in that. I, 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 in no way, shape, form, or fashion can I see this fight going 12 rounds. No way that I can personally see this fight going no 12 rounds. I just can't. With, that, with both of those mentalities, no. And they should, in that sense, should be okay with buying it and paying that. If oh no, it's gonna be because it's gonna be. A, I, I think it's gonna be a, a terrific fight. It's gonna be very exciting and entertaining. You got two guys that are gonna be trying to knock each other out, not fighting recklessly, but you got two guys that are gonna be aggressive, and I think they're gonna be look. I know that they're gonna be looking to knock each other out. Leonard, on August 16th, the Nevada Commission is gonna vote on the refs. The ref and judges. Do you have a preference for referee or judges? 
No, I don't. Um, the, the, again, I have the utmost respect for the Nevada State Athletic Commission. They have a great pool of talent, a great pool of referee and judges, and they always make the right decisions. I mean, sometimes it don't work out with maybe the thing the way that you would have hoped it worked out, but I trust that they will make the right decision with their, with their selection or pool of officials that they have. Okay, and in the past, um, you know, when, when, when Floyd fought Oscar, some people criticized the undercard, saying, okay, you didn't use that big fight as an opportunity to elevate the up-and-coming stars. Now that the card is done, was this the best-case scenario? Was this the card fight to elevate some of your younger stars? Or you most made? definitely, most definitely. A couple of the fights that I, I tried to make, they didn't kind of work out. But again, you know, I got, I, I got three, three of my young, exciting stars that you, you know they're going to be going, and, and we have the whole Fox lineup. This, this is incredible. I mean, the, the, the platform that we have, uh, with having Fox, you know, with the two great, two exciting fights that we have there, and also with the enormous amount of coverage and the platform that we're going to have this rolls right on into the, uh, the televised undercard. It's incredible. What happened to your hand? <laughs> a lot of questions before we get to that. I fell down. <laughs> See, you know, will there be any signature sponsors? You know, there's usually like an official beer or something. Is that still something that you guys are pursuing, or does this fight not yeah, again, Will there be any signature like sponsorships? You know, Almost like, definitely. Yeah. Almost definitely. We just haven't, again, we haven't. It, because what we've been able to do, again, is think outside of the box. Traditionally, Everybody does everything the same way. You got your same Corona, you got your same this, and, and there's nothing wrong with those are great sponsors, but we, we're looking to do to bring more to the table. And obviously work, working with the UFC, these are one of the, again, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing um, that what Dana and, and, and them have done with their brand. Um, I, I commend them. And, um, it's, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. There's talk that in the ring you could have over $50 million worth of sponsorship. Is that accurate or is that close? I don't want to, to get in a discussion about the the, um, the numbers, but we, we're we very excited with the opportunities that are there um, and the platforms and the, the, the sponsors that are going to be from different worlds. You know, you know what I mean? The president, when he was a private citizen, attended the Pacquiao fight. Does he have plans, or have you invited him to attend this fight since he's on vacation? I haven't personally invited him, but I've been told that um, there is maybe an invitation that's out there. I don't know, but I, I don't really have any details on that. But with or without the President of the United States, we have an incredible event that everyone wants to see. Leonard, what was the thought process with putting Sean Porter on the Fox portion of the card and not the paper? Hey, Sean, Sean Porter is, a, a, again, who's a fighter, who's a, a outstanding young fighter, a guy that's great. He's great for boxing, inside the ring and outside the ring. He's a true great guy. Um, having him on, on the Fox platform, that's enormous. You know, he's fighting my kid, Thomas DeLorme. That's how Sean is on the card. Um, Sean has been exposed to uh, a big audience before, and he always comes to fight. Um, he's very aggressive, and he's going to put on a very exciting, entertaining fight. I hope my kid wins. What do you expect out of Javante on this platform? Because equally, he's on the pay-per-view, and he's young, you know, early 20s. When I spoke to him last time, he said he was going to be pay-per-view, and he was dead serious. He did it already. What do you expect from him in this one? Javante is ready to go out there and show up. I know what he's ready to do. He's ready to go out there and put on an electrifying performance, and it didn't matter who I put him in there with. Javante is, is one of the guys, along with Badu, who's going to take advantage of this platform. You know, he, he, both guys, obviously, you know, haven't fought on the platforms of, obviously, Floyd. But to be able to fight on the biggest fight ever to be watched, that's an incredible thing. And especially when a guy like Devontae being the youngest American champion out there who has a, a very, very good fan base now 
And, um, you know, he's, he's, he's very exciting. He's looking to go out there and knock guys out. That's why he's 18 and 0 with 17 knockouts. He's looking to knock guys out, and that's what he's going to be looking to do uh, come August 26. And and when it comes to Badu, he has a a, a a very tough guy that's in front of him. But Badu's going to go in there and look to do the same thing. And we're very confident that he's going to become a um, a, a two division world champion. You know, and and that's here it is. Just think how that sounds. You know, here there's a guy that's that in 2014 he's coming off of a loss and look what he's been able to do in three years alone after this fight you know uh, again we're very confident that he's going to become a two division world champion in a three year period just think what has happened I mean this is what this is what the great American dream is about especially when a guy comes you know to our sport you know uh, he had a bump in the road but he listened to his team, he listened to his promoter, and the rest has been history. You know, here, this guy's coming off a loss. And, you know, one thing I told him is that I had to fight. I said, you had nothing to put your head down about. I said, remember where we're at right now. And he'll tell you this. I said, remember the, who the people are around you right now. You're coming off the loss. And you see there is nobody around. You know, and, and I think that he took that to heart. And he, but he's never been a guy that's been, you know, roaming the streets and all that stuff. He's a guy that takes his job very seriously. He's a family man, somebody that I have a great deal of respect for. You know, I'm very proud that, that you know, I, I played an integral part in this young man's career. I, you know, I get kind of emotional when I talk about his career because, you know, he's a guy, like I said, you know, he comes off a loss and, you know, he, he, he sticks with the same young lady, you know, who's, who's there for him when when the shit wasn't right, you know what I'm saying? And then she stuck by her side, you know, they got married, they had a baby, they bought a house. That's what life is all about. You know what I'm saying? And, and he, he just, he's just looking for opportunities to continue, continue to provide for his family, you know, and he's, he's, he's doing right, living his life. That's what life is all about. Talked about out of the box sponsorships and the UFC and mm -hmm. kind of being able to branch out. Mm -hmm. Badu's wearing a Reebok shirt. Coincidence, yep. or is this something you know a sign of something to come with the UFC partnership and you know tying two and two together? Is that something you're working on? I, I could do. Uh, no, <laughs> no. We 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 were dealing we were dealing we were dealing with Reebok long before. I can't say when they started dealing with them and when they cut their major deal, but we were dealing with Reebok long before that because Floyd has had a relationship with them for a number of years. So I, you know, I struck a deal with them long time ago. But he, he, he is excited about his relationship with his new sponsor, and he's looking to have a continued relationship and take that to the next level. Will Floyd be sponsored by Reebok? Will he wear any Reebok? I don't know what Floyd is, is going to do, but he, there, there's an incredible amount of interest to be part of what he has going on. An incredible amount of interest. Leonard, did the stripes on your jacket mean anything? No, they don't have the F you in it. <laughs> now, Floyd's camp, very on point, no drama, no headlines. McGregor, every day a major headline, what happened, what didn't happen. What do you make of that? I really don't You make too much of it because, you know, um, Paulie's not fighting Connor. Connor's fighting Floyd, you know. They, whatever they had going on with the with the sparring and you know I've heard a number of different stories it really doesn't interest me at all again I'm not gonna fall for the that old you know Conor McGregor can't fight he can't punch he this I'm not gonna fall for it because I've seen how that okie doke works and seen it not gonna get us caught up in it because ideally what everyone would like for Floyd to take this guy for granted he comes out there and blows Floyd out the water ideally that's what a lot of people would love to see you know Floyd's taking this guy very seriously, no different from any other guy that he's fought. He, he's getting out there, busting his behind like he normally does, and not going to fall for the, oh, putting the BS footage out there, or that, oh, make it look like he don't, really can't fight and he really can't do this and really can't do that. All I've seen is a guy that has, and, I, and I've studied the guy myself personally. I've just seen, I've just been in, really, really impressed with his timing. You know, and it's, it's, that's something that's, that, that it's very, very hard 
to get. You know, he has an in incredible timing. That's why he's able to sit in the pocket and kind of watch and see. He sees everything. Kind of sees it. And again, this isn't boxing, but he's been able to dominate those guys over there standing up. You know what I mean? And, and everybody say he can punch. And I've seen the results of what he's been doing to guys. And, you know, okay, I got to respect that. You know, I, do, I don't want him to hit Floyd with none of that. You know, but anything, anything can happen. You know, it's like I, I was watching that Madonna fight the other night. And who, in, who in, would have ever thought that Floyd's going to get buzzed at the end of the round by Madonna? Everybody who said it was slow and, and, you know, everybody knew he could punch. But they say slow as molasses. And, oh, you can see it coming a mile away. But when guys are throwing big shots at you and they're coming from all different angles, sometimes you can't catch a shot in time enough or, you know, just your, your, your instinct, the shot just lands. It grazes you. You know, Floyd got buzzed really bad in that fight. You know, it would have been awful if there would have been 30 more seconds in that fight. But most fights, you make the point, correctly how great Floyd's defense is and how smart Floyd is in the ring. And this fight, you're promoting it by saying Floyd is vulnerable. Well, I'm just only being honest. I'm just only well, because... Why again, the change? Why the why, change? Why, uh, because the reality is, is this, is that he's human. Is Again, is he... Does he have his defensive... Is his defensive reflexes the same as they were five or ten years ago? No. Still way better than anybody in boxing. You know, but all it takes is for the guy to be graced with a shot. Do I think Conor McGregor's going to do that? No, I don't believe that. But anything can happen. Do you believe it's just two weeks away? Um, I can believe it. We've been, we've, I've been grinding. You know, I ain't had no sleep in a day and a half myself. And my team is the same way. We grinding over here. We working. You know, we got a lot of work to do. I got, we got three shows in 17 days. You know, it's a lot going on. Mayweather Promotions, a lot going on. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, but I'm so happy for him, though. I'm so happy for him that he can finally, finally let you guys, like, have it. Let you guys have it, and y'all can dog somebody else out for, for, for breaking all these records and not giving the guy the credit that he deserves. You guys can now take that and y'all can bother somebody else with it. <laughs>